So our agenda for today is we will look at using Delve, we'll look at creating Office 365 groups using the groups and our best practices and takeaways. The majority of our time will be spent in demos rather than going through PowerPoint. So again, I'll swap to my desktop and we'll run through a lot of this, which is much easier to understand. So to kick off things, you need to appreciate now that Office 365 has many, many different buckets of information um, that can be used within a business. So typically, most people are familiar with email. They're used to getting emails that they can now access on their desktop or they can access on the web. But it's important to be aware that there are many, many additional options here. So one of the next options is typically SharePoint. So SharePoint Team Sites allows you to upload and share file information. Uh, which is what many people use it for, but it can also be used to share calendars, contacts, lists, um, all sorts of ad hoc information in a hierarchical structure. Next, we have OneDrive. So OneDrive for Business is typically aimed at personal storage for an individual. It's not designed to replace a file server. It's designed for a user to upload their documents that they're working on, maybe share them with uh, somebody outside the organization, but it's typically aimed at a replacement to a user's home drive on their network. Now, of course, we also have Skype for Business. So Skype for Business is uh, what we're conducting this webinar across. It's also great for instant messaging, chat, uh, all those sort of things as well. So don't rule that out as uh, a way to uh, share information, to communicate. Uh, in many cases, many businesses haven't yet really uh, started to embrace instant messaging and it can be used uh, very well to reduce things like email, especially for quick conversations. And uh, getting into, uh, I suppose, the more unique ones, we've talked about Yammer. Uh, Yammer is the social enterprise social network that is included with all Office 365 tenants. Uh, it is an indication of the way that information is moving in our society in the fact it's all about being open and public and sharing, putting that information out there for anybody to be able to find and uh, act on and add to in an unstructured manner. So if you think of um, SharePoint as a place for structured data, um, then Yammer is very much uh, non-structured data conversations happening in different um, you know, asynchronous means, but it is a very good way to capture a lot of that information that may end up being siloed in places like email. Getting it out into a tool like Yammer allows that to be easily shared amongst uh, a team. And again, what we've added now is the option for the Office 365 group. So when you have a look at all the informational buckets that are available, um, it's very important to realize that you don't have to use them all, obviously, but it's important to understand that different buckets do different jobs um, in different ways. So uh, make sure that you are aware of all the options here and that you do uh, help the customer understand which bucket may serve their needs best. So for example, uh, OneDrive, not good for uh, sharing amongst a team of people, whereas uh, SharePoint is a much, SharePoint team site is much better for that. Whereas uh, email, again, very good for point to point communication, but not so good for sharing amongst a team of people. So again, keep aware of that. So let's have a quick uh, overview or a quick run through of what Delve is. So Delve is, the way you should think of Delve is it's a single pane of glass across all the information sources. So it allows you to look across your team site, your emails, um, Yammer conversations, and in a, in, a, in a one screen way. So a lot of it can't be configured. It's actually uh, uses something called the, uh, basically the office graph. And it allows you to not only, or users to not only see information about their own information, but also to other members in the team. So typically what we see is most people work on uh, a document for a time period. Uh, wherever that may be stored. So again, think of it like recent documents. So the more you work on information, the higher priority, priority the machine algorithm, the machine learning makes, and the further up the ranking in Delve it appears. So uh, when you're working on information, it really doesn't matter these days so much where it is. Uh, it's just a matter of getting back to it. So Delve uh, handles all that by looking at the interactions you have 
with the documents individually, but also importantly, it looks at the interactions that other people have uh, within the team. So if you're conversing with someone uh, uh, with email and that person then starts working on a document that you may have uh, visibility of, potentially, you don't know that they are working on it, but the Delve, but Delve will allow that to be surfaced and also make you aware of the information that others in your team are working on. So again, think of it as uh, a machine learning basically prompting you, letting you know the information that other people you're interacting with uh, what they're working on. Now all of this uses something called the Office Graph technology. So underneath all of Delve, the machine learning is something called Office Graph. Now Office Graph basically looks at the interactions you have with your own information, your files, your folders, your emails, Yammer conversations, but it also looks at the uh, interactions you have with your team. So the emails that you send, the documents that you share, maybe the sites that you work on together, and it uses this uh, to determine what is the uh, interactions, what is the relationships, how strong they are, and then what information should be surfaced to you that you may not be seeing. Now, the good thing in, about Delve is that it relies on the machine learning to take care of all this. So there's not much that you need to do to configure this at all. But um, obviously, some people like to be able to favor information to pin it, I suppose, so they can always get back to it and know where it is. Uh, Microsoft have committed to recently, uh, recently to allowing users to be able to favor an item. So basically, what you can do if you see an item in your Delve, uh, you can go in and favorite that and then there will be an area for favorites that you can then uh, make sure that that pinned information is um, available to you. So because every day when you come back to your Delve, it's obviously going to potentially be in a different order, a different priority based on the machine learning. Using favorites, you can manually pin something or put a priority on something. And apart from pinning a favorite, what you could do is you can also create a pub what's called a board in Delve. So a board is a public area in which any member of the team who has access to the information can pin information to it so it stays there. So think of a board maybe around a project. So if you're working on a project and you have multiple people working on that, they can uh, pin the file that they're working on to that project board and that then becomes publicly available to everybody. So that means that if you get a new team member come on board who wants to uh, work on the project, they can simply go to their Delve. They would then see the uh, board, the project board, and pinned to that board would be the number of files that uh, people in the project are working on. So again, a quick way to start categorizing the information. But uh, at its core, Delve will use the Office Graph technology will use the machine learning to automatically update the priority of the files. You can obviously favorite the files individually or you can pin them to a board and make them available publicly to everybody who has access to those documents. Now, what is also now surfaced inside Delve is the profile information for each user. So it is possible within Office 365 for a user to go in and update their profile to include information about their work phone number, home phone number, skill set, uh, contact information. And again, it will be something I would certainly encourage um, users to do straight away. So I think it's a good way for them to get familiar with the technology, for them to start getting their information into uh, the uh, Office 365 that allows them to then share that across all the people in their organization. So we'll cover that and show you how to get in and start editing and updating this profile information that certainly makes it very handy for people to be able to track down specific skills and information about the users. Now, quick thing about Office 365 groups. Now, Office 365 groups are basically a cross between an email distribution group and OneDrive for Business. So they are basically a group, an email distribution group, which also has the added benefit of um, a number of shared items. So the shared items are uh, areas to put files in, 
uh, a shared calendar and also a shared OneNote file. So as I've got here that the group, once it's established, will have a group calendar that they can all access update. It will also have group files which are stored effectively in a in a OneDrive for Business for that group. Uh, and they also get a shared OneNote file that they can all access and update information. Now, thanks to Outlook 2016, we're beginning to see uh, that groups are visible in Outlook 2016 on the desktop. So, so prior to Outlook 2016, the only way that you could view uh, the groups was you had to do it through the web interface. You had to go into the Outlook Online to be able to view that. But thanks to Microsoft and the recent release of Office 2016, you can now do that directly in uh, Office 2016. So it's not all the information quite from groups is quite visible there just yet but we expect to be able to see all the shared resources available on the desktop using Outlook 2016 in a short period of time. Now, one of the other things you can do with your uh, Office 365 group is you can invite external users. So they don't necessarily just have to be uh, within your tenant, you can also go in there and make some of that information available to others outside your organization. So again, a good way to share the information but make sure that the intellectual property the ip stays totally within your business the other big benefit here is the information if it resides in office 365 uh, falls under the compliance and the searchability of uh, the office 365 tools what i think is most important about the office 365 groups is that it is a stepping stone to better collaboration using SharePoint, OneDrive, and potentially Yammer. Now, many people, uh, unfortunately, still use email as a way of collaborating, uh, sharing files, uh, doing planning, uh, doing all the bad things they're not supposed to be doing. So rather than trying to forklift that uh, culturally across to a tool that is can be complex for a lot of people to understand like SharePoint and does need some setting up, does need uh, some training, you can basically take the interme intermediate step of moving to Office 365 groups. So you'll still get the ability to work with emails, to have group conversations, but now you begin to introduce the ability to uh, share files collaboratively using OneDrive for Business, very much like uh, SharePoint. You'll get uh, shared OneNote. So many things users aren't familiar with. So again, a very good transition step keeps the email familiarity for them, but begins to uh, unveil the benefits of shared files in a single location and also uh, shared resources like uh, OneNote files. So with that said, uh, it's much better to go and uh, actually do a demo. So let me just flip across to my desktop here. Give uh, that a minute to come up so everybody can see it. So hopefully when this comes up, you will see a uh, basically a, a browser here. Hopefully we can all see that. So when a user now goes into Delve, so the way you get to Delve is you go to your app launcher in the uh, top left there. You'll see that's also uh, lovingly referred to as the waffle. Uh, you'll see that we have an option here for uh, Delve. So we have a tile there. Now, when a user now goes into Delve, whether they've been in there or not, they will see this uh, new splash screen here. So they can obviously go straight to Delve or they can work their way uh, through the uh, basic tutorial, gives them an outline of what Delve uh, will do. And I think it's very worthwhile that everybody works through this so they understand that, for example, their private information will remain private. They can see it, but others may not be able to unless they've got rights to it. And again, you'll see that it gives them the basics of working with documents, pinning it to uh, the dashboard. OK, so once they've worked through this, they basically then click on and go to their Delve. So we should see uh, basically Delve on the screen here. What you'll see is that it is presented in a card style uh, view here. So each item receives its own card, uh, makes it a nice interface to work with and a uh, view. You'll see that up the top here, the first part of our card indicates basically who edited that document when it was edited. So in this case, I've logged in as Lewis Collins, but you'll see because the information that I created, Robert Crane, uh, is publicly available, 
uh, Lewis can see that that information, this um, Office 365 identity PDF has been viewed a lot and therefore it appears at the top of the list. So the more that people interact with documents uh, and interact with others, uh, you'll see that that will uh, get a higher priority. Underneath that, we get a preview of the actual information. So if I scroll down here, you'll see that, for example, here's a video, here's a different document. So you'll see that there's an indication here that this is a PDF document, uh, Word document. Uh, we've also got videos here. Uh, again, so you can see where the source is. Now, also what you'll see is here is that I have a hyperlink to the location of that information. So let's say, for example, that you're working on a tender document and you throw it into a SharePoint library or maybe OneDrive as you're running out the door, uh, the last thing. Typically, uh, come the next day, you would uh, may have overlooked or not remembered where you've stored that information. But thanks to Delve, Delve will know that that is the most recent document you have been working on. It will surface that as a priority and allow you simply to click on that and bring that up. So this is why I'm talking about the important thing here about it being a single pane of glass. So rather than users coming in in the morning and going into their emails, then going into their team site, then going into their OneDrive, then maybe going to Skype for business, then coming back to their emails, they can certainly start um, and uh, work with Delve to be that single pane of glass across all their conversations. Down here on the icons, we have the ability to send a link. So if we want to uh, send a link to uh, somebody else in email to link to this, we can do that. We can also uh, click on the, the people icon here and we can determine who has access to that information, whether they can read, write, or whatever. And I've also got the option here. The third option here is, is that I can now post this to Yammer. So in the aim of making information more public, the best, uh, the best practice is around putting the information maybe in the SharePoint team site where it can have version control, check-in, check-out, uh, document management, all that sort of compliance. But the actual conversation, you know, what should we do here? How do we do this? Who's done this edit? Why should this be updated? Can be conducted in Yammer. So the advantage is, is that you create a link to this item in Yammer. The conversation happens around that item in Yammer. Uh, and again, that means that the information, the conversation is public and the document still retains in a single location. Now down at the bottom here, you'll see that we have this uh, option here to add it to a board. So I can go in here and create a new board and then pin that to the board. But as you see over here, I have a board already created called Project X. There's nothing there, right? So if I go back to me, and uh, go back to, uh, for example, here. And then let's say, let's add this to a board. So if I put this into Project X, hopefully there's a space there. Enter. So that will now add that to the uh, project board. If I go into project board, obviously it hasn't updated yet, but you'll see that then appear there. Now, not only can I access my own information, right? so these are the files that are relevant specifically to me because I've gone into the me option here, you'll see that I can actually drill into other people within the organization. So I can look at Gordon, hasn't done much, but if I look at, for example, Robert Crane, you'll see that this is the activity that Robert Crane has been working on. So again, my home gives me an overview of everybody's information, what Office 365 is important to uh, me, but I can drill into an individual here and I can see what information they've been working on. So that allows me to basically see, oh, that's interesting. Uh, Robert's in my team. I see that he's working on this document here called Hello World. I haven't seen that. Maybe I should go in and work on that. So again, that's the advantage that that will give you is you can look across all the information for people that you interact with every day. Now, the information that is displayed is controlled by the permission. So you can't see anything that you wouldn't have access to normally. So if there's an attachment in an email um, and that's not shared with anybody else, well then you certainly won't be able to, others won't be able to view it. You'll also see down here that we get an indication of how many people have viewed this information. So obviously the more that you interact with this information, the more that it will uh, basically retain a priority. Now, 
as you can see from the option here, we can go in and we can look at the profile of each individual user. So if I go into back into me, so I'm logged in as Lewis, go into the profile, you'll see that because I'm inside my profile, I have the option in the top uh, right here to go in and edit the profile. Now this will take me to basically an area within a SharePoint team site. You'll see that I've nominated a, a manager. You'll see that I have put some information there. And importantly, I've added uh, options here like Ask Me About, so Office 365 SharePoint. They will be surfaced when people do a search. Add the contact information, and over on the right, you can determine who has access to that info, who can see that information. So certainly encourage, uh, I think it's best practice to get your users, no matter whether they're big or small, to certainly go into Delve, have a bit of a uh, look around, but then go in and really uh, start updating the information that is inside their profile, because that's going to be of benefit. It's going to be a single location where all that information is located and it's going to be searchable across the organization. So one of the steps um, I would encourage as best practice is to get users to fill that out and that will give them some familiarity with working with SharePoint. Now, what you'll see here also is that Delve now allows you the ability, for example, to go in and create a blog. So if you have users that want to post information, that want to share information in a more formal setting, you can go in and allow them here to go in and create a blog using um, some very easy to use web tools and make that available to other users. So if you have a manager maybe who's blogging about a project, uh, that blog post will then appear in other team members delve so that they can then go in, have a look, review that, comment on it and whatnot. Over on the right hand side here, you'll see that we can build out a basic organizational tree. And one of the things that Microsoft has committed to making available shortly is the ability to basically add um, public praise here. So you can select an a person within your organization, uh, in your Delve, you can then select them and there will be an area down here that you can go in and give them a few stars, give them a little bit of a, uh, a pat on the back publicly for the work that they are doing. So again, that will be coming shortly um, to uh, the Office 365 tenants. Now, the most important thing here is if we go back to our home area, um, again, the single pane of glass gives us this ability to look across all our information. The most important area, probably up the top here, is um, the search. So if I go into the search up the top there, you'll see in type OneDrive, you'll see that it queries all the information that I have access to, files, Yammer conversations, uh, whatnot, and it looks for the word OneDrive. So it's found OneDrive in the heading here, it's found OneDrive in the text here, and you'll see it gives me um, the location where that is, so I can simply dive into that information. So really, as you start building out information, it, it's not as important typically to worry uh, about the structure. Again, this should be a first point of call for many users when they're working with all their information buckets. Um, that structure certainly is important to uh, make things um, uh, you know, in the way that you want them. But don't overlook the fact it's going to be very much easier for users simply to pop into their Delve, run a search for a document that they're looking for or whatever, and for that to pop up. So again, don't overlook the power of something something like search. Okay, so again, to get to uh, Office 365 groups, first option here is to go into our um, web uh, Outlook Online. When we do, we will find an option, <coughs> excuse me, down the bottom here, hopefully, under uh, groups. Okay, so let's just... There it is, just loading, taking a sec. So down here, you'll see that we have an area called groups. I can browse any groups. At the moment, I've only got one. So if I click on um, the group here called support, which I've created, what we'll see is that uh, we have a group conversation happening um, around this. So you'll see that uh, we can go in and have different users type in, uh, start a conversation. We can have a reply. So again, as I mentioned, very much like a standard 
uh, email thread. Up the top here, you'll see that we have the ability now to um, add and upload files for this group that all group members can now access um, and synchronize to their desktop or work with or view. So as you can see, this file arrangement basically is very much like a OneDrive for Business. So as I mentioned, think of an Office 365 group as basically a hybrid between a email distribution group and a OneDrive for Business. But not only have we got access to files, you'll see that we have a group calendar. Okay, so this can be again very handy for users to be able to um, schedule group events. Uh, they can all have access to the calendar. You'll see that they can obviously view their own calendar, which is in blue in this case for Lewis Collins, and the support calendar here um, is in a different colour for any items that appear. Not only that, we also have the ability, if we hit the ellipse, the three dots here, we can go in and we can access a shared notebook. So again, every group, Office 365 group, has access to a shared OneNote file. So the idea here is, is that we're looking to improve collaboration and move it away from basically continually siloing information inside emails, duplicating it, filling up inboxes. Um, the more information that we can make publicly available, the better off it's going to be. One of the great tools to achieve that, which is basically on every user's desktop these days, as, as well as being available on the web, is OneNote. So certainly encourage you to uh, get users starting to use OneNote and another great way to do that is to introduce them to the Office 365 groups where that is included um, automatically. Now what you'll see is that I can, if I want as a user, I can leave the group uh, again if I don't find that relevant to me and again if I want to I can go in and look at the details around the group, you'll see that the group is has its own email address, so people can just send emails to it as normal. So think of it, a group typically like a shared mailbox for group conversations, but with all these uh, added features in it as well. And if we want, we can go in and we can add members um, and we can do all those sort of things with it as well. So if we go back to our Outlook, you'll see that uh, it's very easy to create a new group. Okay, so let me just go back to my mail. Okay, so if I want to create a group, I just uh, select the option to do that. So what I might do here is I might create a group called Accounts. Okay, I can uh, then enter the ID if I want to. I can edit that to make any different. I add a description. And you'll notice that under privacy here, I've got two options. I'm going to have the ability to make it public, which it is by default, which means anybody can see what's inside. They can just click and view into it. Or um, you can make it private so that only approved members can see what's inside. Now, the important thing to remember here is, is that the group names will always be public. So you will see a list of groups. Some of them may be public, some of them may be private. If you click into a private group that you don't have access to, you obviously won't be able to get inside to look at the information. But at this point in time, the name of the group will certainly be uh, public. So just be aware of that. We can set the language and down here we have an option to subscribe new members so they receive group conversations and calendar events in their inbox. So we can choose whether to push out the conversations and the calendar appointments we make from our group to all group members. Okay, so we'll do that and just go create. Take a second for the uh, group to create. So what I want to add is I'm going to add a user. All right, so I'll add myself in there and add that user. Okay, so you'll now see that I have that uh, additional group uh, created over here. So if I go into here and I have the option to edit the group, one of the options, I can obviously change the uh, graphic for the group, always a good idea. But you'll see that once I edit the group here, you, I get an additional option which wasn't available when I was creating it. So you'll see here, let people outside the organization email the group. Okay, so because it's now become effectively a shared mailbox, it has a uh, public uh, email address, you can allow people outside your organization to email 
into that as well. So it gives you that added flexibility. And down the bottom there, if you do want to delete the group, you can basically just select that. And I understand that it will be permanently deleted and the group will be removed and so will the files and so will the basically the mailbox and the conversations will be removed. Now, again, the idea here is, is that you'll see that if I swap over to my Outlook on the de desktop, so I'm running Outlook uh, 2016 here, you'll see that underneath my inbox, you'll see that I also, oops, you'll also have the uh, heading here called group. So if I click into project, you'll see that I have the conversation, I have the calendar request, they certainly appear um, in there and I can go in and maybe view uh, in the calendar here to see these items. So thanks to Office 2016, uh, especially Outlook, the, a lot of the group information now is basically surfaced in uh, Outlook on the desktop. You'll see at the top here on the um, uh, ribbon, you'll get the membership, you'll be able to edit the group, we can go to the calendar, the files, the notebook, all that sort of stuff. So the functionality of the group is now being brought down to the desktop client as well if you have users who are more comfortable using that but as you can appreciate more and more people I'm certainly finding are becoming quite comfortable with using the web and working in that environment so there's no limitation I don't think to using the web uh, basically over uh, the desktop. Now a few other things to uh, point out before we do uh, wrap up so let me just go across here and point out uh, a new edition that is coming for Office 365. So if you aren't aware, Office 365 will so shortly be introducing something called the Office 365 Planner. So this is a basic uh, task management planning style tool that we included in uh, all licenses for free. But if you have a look at this interface here, you'll see that it looks very, very much like Delve. So you have the concept of um, boards, you have the concept of favourites, you have the concept of tagging. Uh, again, so this Delve style interface with informational cards uh, is certainly something that's becoming more and more standard throughout the Office 365 environment and I would expect to see that uh, in more and more products through uh, over time. So again, you'll see that we, with this new uh, product planning product, you'll see you get lots of metrics and the idea here is that it again will be very much based on Office 365 groups. So Office 365 groups are going to be like the old Active Directory security groups and that's how information uh, is going to be controlled for users within Office 365 typically. Now the last thing I'll show you here is the fact that um, Office Delve, which we talked about, is going to add praise, favourites and enhanced content creation. So if you have a look here, what you'll find is, is um, with this moving graphic, is when we go into our profile in Delve, you'll see that underneath the organisational chart like I showed you, there will be the ability to go in and select an individual within the organizational tree and then basically add praise. You'll be able to give them a, a different little um, uh, badge and then thank them very much for their contribution. So uh, again, indication of the social aspects that are driving the, the new collaboration platform. Again, a very good way to uh, improve employee engagement generally. You'll also see that here, if you have a look at this blog post, you can create uh, new pages. This is the authoring tool. The ability to create blogs, as I mentioned in Office 365, uh, allows you to create very, very modern style web pages um, that obviously shared within the organization. And the other thing here, which isn't available in my tenant yet, you'll see that you have the ability basically to favorite information as it appears in your Delve. So what you can do is basically go in and favorite or star an item, and then it will appear, there'll be another option here after your profile called favorites, and that will be where all your um, favorited or starred information basically will be um, displayed. So again, very, very important, very, very uh, interesting way that Microsoft's going about sharing um, this sort of information. Now, importantly, one of the questions I'm sure that everybody will uh, get from their users, if we go back to Delve quickly, 
let's just show you how to disable um, the information if you don't feel like being particularly social. So you can disable it in two ways. Firstly, as an administrator, you can go into your Delve, go into the cog. You'll see there's an option here called sharing activity and select that and you'll see the option here is don't share my activity. Okay, so if they don't want to share their information with other users, um, they can simply go in and select that. Um, note that it may take up to a week for all changes to flow for effect because there's an algorithm running in the background. The other way is if you are an administrator, so let me just, no, not, not an administrator, let me try over here. Okay, so if I go to admin in my Office 365, so I have to be a global admin to do this, you'll see that uh, also this is uh, the new uh, admin center preview. So rather than the traditional uh, Office 365 admin, this is what the new portal is going to be looking like. Uh, we go down to our SharePoint admin. When we go into our SharePoint admin, what we need to do is go into settings. And then in the settings, we will, ooh, that's interesting. Shouldn't have happened. Always in preview. Okay, so let me try once again. Keep our fingers crossed. Yep, looks a bit better. Okay, so down here in settings, okay, you'll see that uh, down here a bit. Okay, so under the option here called Office Graph, okay, if you want to as an administrator, you can turn off access to Office Graph. Now, by selecting that option, you're going to turn it off for every single user in the tenant. Okay, so each user can choose to not individually share their information. As an administrator, you can go in here and turn off Office Graph and effectively delve for every user. So again, if you need to do that, that's how you can achieve that. So let me just go back to the slides and round off. Give that a sec to come up. Hopefully it'll come back to the slide where we were. Yes, that's great. Okay, so, right, next slide. Okay, so some best practices to finish off with. Um, I would be promoting Delve as the single pane of glass, the place that users should go to in their Office 365, rather than popping in and out of, you know, in, like from their emails to their OneDrive to their SharePoint team sites, rather than popping all over the place, use Delve as the central place to start looking for information. Uh, the groups, as I mentioned, is a great stepping stone to using SharePoint. So if you have people who are traditionally email based and are struggling or uh, typically sending lots and lots of attachments around, multi-versioned, um, maybe not quite ready for SharePoint, start introducing groups, get them to use the shared area, the shared calendar and the OneNote uh, and that gives them a stepping stone. Once they've outgrown that, then you can start looking to introduce SharePoint and you'll generally have a lot less um, a lot less resistance to that happening because they do see the benefit. Um, as I mentioned, there are a lot of different uh, buckets, informational buckets in Office 365. You don't have to use them all. It's a matter of understanding what the tools are and how they best work. So for example, uh, Yammer is very good for uh, making sure that conversations are made public and searchable. SharePoint team sites are great for sharing and working on uh, collaboration of files and other information. But don't ignore the fact that there are lots and lots of different uh, information buckets and make sure that you do promote them to your users so they at least are aware of them and you can help them make the decision about what works first. Now, don't forget that their needs, their uses of this may also change over time. The trend is definitely away from siloing information inside emails to creating an environment where information is basically made available, made open, made shared, made searchable, um, so that people can find and self-service themselves. So they don't have to ask somebody for that attachment or they don't have to ask for a link to that location. Again, search is definitely the killer app of our time and should be used far more across organizations. So I encourage users to go to Delve, run search or use search in SharePoint uh, to find the information that they want. Uh, again, that's gonna allow them to get access to that information and that's how most people find stuff on the internet. Try and dissuade them from siloing information in areas where nobody else can get access to. 
So some takeaways are, uh, again, start playing with Delve and the groups. Play with them yourselves. Understand what they do, how they work. Not a lot to do with Delve, but again, make sure you can get the concept across to users and show them some of the benefits and basically get them using it. Um, the important thing is, as I mentioned, is you need to show your customers these technologies. You typically don't want them discovering them themselves, um, asking questions, why didn't you show this? What does this do? Uh, be proactive, use it as a very good excuse to go and speak to your customers and say, can I spend 15 minutes of your time and just show you a bit of Delve? Did you know it did this? Did you know it could do search? This is how we favorite things. Uh, these are the benefits of it. It doesn't have to be in depth, but again, introduce it to them. Make sure that you are the central point they're going to continually come back to to ask about more information. Uh, look out for the new additions. So as I mentioned, the Office 365 Planner is not far away, very much the same look and feel um, of these products. Don't forget that products like Delve and Groups generally also have mobile apps. So Delve has its own dedicated mobile app for all platforms. That can make it means it's very easy to triage and find information even when you're out and about on the go. Um, and again, Importantly, spend a bit of time understanding what information sources make sense for the customer. But as I mentioned before, don't get locked into these as the be all and end all forever. Because as more and more millennials come into the workforce, their expectation is that tools um, to get their job done will be more social. The information and their ability to share that information will become more public. So again, these tools are certainly speaking to that. Microsoft obviously devotes a lot of time, effort and energy into making sure that it has the tools now and into the future. So even if your customer is very locked into using emails, uh, don't be shy of introducing it and uh, understand and showing them the benefits and certainly encourage you to look at using those information sources yourself within your own Office 365 demo tenant. So some resources around Delve, the slides will be available after the fact, so no need to worry about jotting everything down. Some more resources about the Office 365 groups, plenty of great videos on YouTube to help you understand and also help customers understand